An aquatic food web, if you start from literally the bottom up, um, starts with bacteria. It is fueled from above by sunlight, like any food web is, and that feeds usually suspended algae. Those algae are fed on by microorganisms, but they're then the base of the food web for the higher levels. And the higher levels in the open waters, in the water itself, tend to be things like planktivorous fish, fish that will eat those individual small microscopic animals. And those small fish are things like smelt, uh, larval fishes or juvenile fishes of every species that then will eventually sometimes become predators of the planktivorous fishes. And those predators are the ones that we tend to find most interesting, things like lake trout and rainbow trout and walleye and basses. We've been stocking lake trout for 30 years now. In the Great Lakes they've been stocking for almost 50 years. All of the Atlantic salmon, all of the lake trout in the lake, are the direct product of putting them back in the lake from hatcheries because those two species are locally extinct. They, they got wiped out. The hatchery fish are, put, uh, are, are returned to the lake, they're stocked, and they become part of the ecosystem, they're predators, they're out there, but they're not reproducing on their own. And that puts us in a very awkward position of spending a huge amount of time and money sustaining a food web that should be self-sustaining. The habitat loss that's sort of most in the face and, and easily seen is the loss of access to upstream habitat. You build a dam, you completely block their access to a place where they can re reproduce and sustain their population. Even in the lake proper, a number of fish species that spawn, say, along the shorelines, um, place their eggs on the bottom. The first part of a lake proper that's affected by human activity is the nearshore area. Modeling aquatic ecosystems is incredibly challenging. The system is not only so complex, but it's so large. If we understood why we can't put lake trout back after 50 years of trying, we'd really understand a lot more about what a food web is all about and what makes an ecosystem stable. The fact that it's not working tells us something about what we don't understand.